Welcome to Brand Me. I'm Preston Conrad, and this is the podcast about doing your own thing, whether it's building a personal brand, maximizing your side hustle, or making the most of your every day. We, ha- we did have a little bit of time to learn what being in retail was like with smaller accounts, smaller retail channels. So we got to learn and see, okay, we could, we could do this. We, we, could, we think we could scale up. Hey, everybody. Today's episode is all about how being an expert can evolve your brand in ways that you could never have imagined. I'm sitting down with Ron Robinson. He is a cosmetic chemist and the founder of one of the most hot and buzzy brands in the skincare space, Beauty Stat. I am a personal fan, but his story is remarkable of how he came to launch his brand from a product from being a chemist for another brand. You'll love this episode. So much great information. Here's Ron. Ron Robinson. I mean, we made it happen finally. We did. We did. It, it, took, it, took, it took a couple of years, year and a half. I did. It just took a quick pandemic to get us aligned and get get on the podcast. I'm so excited to have you today. And before I get into all the juicy stuff and ask you all the questions, I'm gonna I, I have to hit you over the head with this because when I when I look at your brand, Beauty Stat, I see lines like TikTok's most famous cosmetic chemist, the internet's most favorite skincare brand, and Haley Bieber's holy grail. I mean, those are some pretty big headlines, sir. Yeah, we we've been We've been very blessed, uh, to say the least. You have been, and we're going to get into it. But before we get into all the headlines, how did you start Beauty Stat? Because I know a bit about you, but I think your journey and your expertise is really remarkable. And when I was thinking of doing an episode about how your expertise really is your gold key to launching a brand, I couldn't think of anyone else that I wanted to have on rather than an actual chemist <laughs> himself, but tell everybody about how you kind of got this off the ground. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Preston, I'm a cosmetic chemist. I started with the brand Clinique, a division of Estee Lauder back in 1990. So I'm dating myself. I'm, I'm very old. I'm prehistoric. Oh, so, stop. So, so I've been, uh, uh, well, I need to thank God you work in skincare because you look unreal amazing oh, thank you thank you so much and so developed products for a lot of big brands from clinique i went on to la mer revlon avon lancome 25 plus years developing products for a lot of big brands i had no intention of starting my own brand i thought i've invented it i developed it all and no intention and i actually left my last corporate job to start beauty step originally as a popular blog and a social media agency where I was working to help consumers educate them about products, what's working and not working, helping them try to cut through the clutter of all of the thousands and thousands of beauty products on the market. So no intention to ever start a beauty brand until... Not in any of that time when you were working with all these products and you're like, I found the key to X, Y, Z, you didn't want to do your own? No. And all of my friends and former colleagues would ask me, Ron, why don't you start your own brand? You're such a great chemist and product developer. You'd be fantastic at it. And it wasn't until I was asked repeatedly by my consumers that were reading my blog, as well as beauty editors, they were saying, hey, Ron, I'm working on a story about vitamin C. Why is it unstable? What can consumers do to shop it better? Consumers would ask me, hey, how do I preserve my vitamin C product? It's turning orange, it's turning brown, it's oxidizing. So it was because of all of that feedback I was getting from both beauty editors and consumers that I said, you know what? What if I did stabilize pure vitamin C? What if I was able to do, to do that? Wouldn't that be the holy grail of beauty? And I was tinkering around with trying to solve that problem for a few years now with me and a couple of cosmetic chemist buddies of mine until we came, and I, uh, I think you, you might want to hear this too, is that I stumbled upon a way to solve and stabilize pure vitamin C in a formula that had a great texture and feel. And based on that, mm. along with great clinical, independent clinical results made me say, hey, listen, this is solving a big need. This, the market needs to see this. Consumers need to try and experience this product. And that's what made me change my mind and launch BeautyStat, the skincare brand. 
Wow. I mean, first of all, talk about unlocking the Holy Grail. Had no, had any of these other brands ever challenged you to do this? Like one of these big brands say, hey, um, Ron, figure out a way to stabilize vitamin C. Is that something that just no brand had, had dug deep enough into when you were in-house or that that wasn't an area of concern and that it just, it was a trend thing that came about a bit later? It was, it's a great question, Chris. And I think it was, it was one of those things that was accepted that, okay, we can't stabilize it. So we will, we'll just continue to doing as, as, as best as we could with either vitamin C derivatives, which aren't as powerful, not as effective, or launching products that had a limited shelf life. So it wasn't until mm. I was out on my own that I say, you know what, I'm going to put the resources and do this my way and really try to solve this. Wow. And here we are today. And that was the product that got you uh, all over the internet. Uh, for those, uh, I, I know because I'm, oh, there you have it. I've got it about 10 feet from me and all your other products in my medicine cabinet. <laughs> That's the product that started my obsession with your brand. For everybody listening, just a quick recap. What does vitamin C do for you and why do you need it? I know, but I think a lot of people get confused. Yeah, three things. Powerful antioxidant, so it works to help fight free radical damage. Second thing, it helps to stimulate collagen, and that's why vitamin C works to help improve lines and wrinkles and to firm the skin. Third thing, it, hel it helps prevent the overproduction of melanin, which is the pigment in our skin that gives us our skin color. But if, if, if it's overstimulated, it could create dark spots and hyperpigmentation. And vitamin C helps mm. to prevent that and help you know, you know, um, level that off. So those three things are con what consumers need to know that vitamin C does. Very important for the skin. It's, and it's yeah. essential. If there's one takeaway... Yes. If there's one takeaway from this, it's to to run, don't walk to your nearest altar or order Ron's website and buy this product because it is a must need in your skincare regimen. When you run, when you discovered this secret, because you weren't, you, you said you hadn't been a previous, like an entrepreneurial thought of the, all these years, I'm going to launch something, I'm going to launch something. When you unlocked the secret, did you have a little bit of a panic when you were like, okay, shit, now now what? Where do I get the money? How do I find a this? How do I do a that? Like, walk me through what that process was like for someone. Absolutely. So again, I, I though I was an entrepreneur in the fact that I launched a blog and agency and was able to, yep. to make a living from that, I shifted to a different type of business model from providing services yep. to now selling products yep. directly to consumers or to retailers. So I had to I had to learn yep. a new skill set, and, and that was something I was not trained to do. I didn't, I, you know, I, I went to school for chemistry, and I was formulating in, in a laboratory. Yeah. So it was it was a, a little bit of a learning curve. So made tons of mistakes, but the science, the scientist in me, the chemist in me, knew that okay, I'm testing and making mistakes every day as a chemist, but I have to quickly learn to, okay, that didn't work, try something else. And that's what I, what I can what carries yeah. through as being now a skincare brand owner. Where did you start making, does, does a chemist naturally just have their own lab or like, how did you start? Where, where do you, where does one start tinkering around with their billion dollar idea? Where does that happen? <laughs> yeah. So when, of course, when I work, when I work, when, it's a great question. When I worked for big brands, obviously I had a lab that was, that I was working in because yeah. the company owned the lab. And as a, as a chemist that yeah. no, is no longer attached to a brand, I had to either rent space at other labs, which is, which is something that's feasible that, that, that uh, chemists and, and brand, other brand owners can do. Or now we've, uh, we're at the point where we have our own lab, the own, our own beauty stat cosmetics yeah, lab. Yeah, you do. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. That glow up. I mean, it's so incredible. How was it? When you, when you, so you came to market with the Universal C, which was my gateway drug into your brand. Um, what were your plans at that time for expansion? Because I think a lot of people have an idea for one thing or one thing they know they can do well, and they're worried about there's so much fear and like, well, what would I do next? How would I expand this? What would I do as my next product? Did you, did that come across your brain at that point? Or were you just like, let me get this out the door and become famous for one thing? It's a, another great question. And it's, it's one of those things where, where entrepreneurs ask me that as well. I think, I think sometimes 
you need to focus narrow and really own something. And then from there, you, you, you're, you're, you're almost given the legs to then ex- expand out slowly. If you could establish yourself as an expert mm. in one thing, you may have the legs to, to branch out a little bit. So the, the goal was to go to market and essentially own vitamin C. People, sometimes people call me the king of vitamin C. And I think you know, that, that shows the, the work that was put in to market uh, that product and help us become known for that. Now we're at a point, as you mentioned, now we're at the point where we're looking at expanding. And now we're starting to dabble into new things, like you know, medical grade silver. Uh, we're looking at a lot of we have new product launches coming this year, which step out or step away from vitamin C. So we're excited to talk about that. But it's leveraging the fact that we have an expertise or being known for one thing, and then slowly, gradually branching out into another another space as well. Yeah. I love that cleanser, by the way. The um, it has the blue. That's the what the the silver. Yes. It has the blue stripe across it. Yes, it is. It's a microphone. Yes. Oh, there you, you yeah. got it right there. <laughs> yeah. I love that cleanser. How do you? Because uh, as a brand owner myself, it's kind of like this constant push pull where I can use social and I can use people to tell me what they want, but then I can know as a founder what I want to make and what I think will, based on data or based on behaviors, will be profitable. How do you make the decision for like what's going to go into that UD Stat Lab next? Do you workshop your communities? Do you go with your gut? Do you look at trends? It's all of the above. You need a, you need a good bit of gut int- uh, intuition. Data is super important. Data is going to that gives yep. you the, the ability to show the potential, the growth potential of that new product, new brand, whatever. But, and I think the gut part of it, it's got to be a blend. And that's the magic. That is the puzzle that we as brand owners have to, have, mm. have to solve. How do we balance gut instinct with data that's out there? Because that, when you do it right, that's when the true breakthroughs really happen. So true. I mean, that... Um very much now, which, you know, we're looking at new categories and new things. And as much as I don't like to look at data, I'm like, man, well, I really wanted this to be next, but the paper says this and we should, you know, so we're in that, we're in that mix right now. But what was the year that you launched vitamins, the C? Was it 2019? It was, it was 2019. So yeah, 2019. So we're going into our third, yeah, we're going to our third year now. So when, when I became really enveloped in your brand was during the scariest time of life, which was when this pandemic hit and you were a, a relatively new brand at the time. How did this weird influx of being stuck at home, um, crazy consumption in skincare and TikTok come together to help your brand? Because I think that's, and maybe I'm just thinking this, but I feel like there was this holy trifecta of what happened that allowed you to really become such a standout at that time and grow. Preston, it was a perfect storm. It was the combination of being a direct-to-consumer brand and being a social media driven brand with the fact that we were going into a pandemic where consumers were really looking at wellness and self care and highly searching for ingredients like vitamin C and and the benefits of it, both Mm. ingesting it as well as applying it topically. And then in the middle of 2020, we had a movement as well where People of color, right. Black Lives Matter, all of that came together. And, and and the fact that I'm a cosmetic chemist and now consumers are, now they've become skeptical about some of the influencers and content creators that are so-called experts, in quotation marks, and yeah. looking for who are the real experts, the derms, the estheticians, the cosmetic chemists. And then the this now, the cosmetic chemist, which has been probably the one that's been underground and not not very vocal has now surfaced and I've become one of those cosmetic chemists that is that has a voice and is willing to share and educate so th- that's the perfect storm that happened for for us and, and the brand that uh, that really uh, catapulted us 
to now being rolling out into Ulta nationwide. It was really remarkable to watch as a fan, as an admirer, as a user. I just felt like I was watching this trajectory like through my phone and it was really impressive. You brought up something so funny to me that's also incredible. How does it feel for this kind of subset of experts that normally wouldn't be jumping on the internet to do TikToks, the cosmetic chemist, becoming kind of like mini celebrities and personal brands in their own right. Like just in my feed, I see these people in lab coats or, and they, they rattle off their stats of where they've worked and what they do and why I should listen to them. That has to feel good and wild at the same time. It absolutely does because, you know, I was a lab rat. I was in a lab coat and I was hidden. I was, you know, given projects by my my marketing team and saying, hey, we want a product that does X, Y, and Z, formulate it. And we formulated it and yep. then they took it and ran with it. And we were not we were not really you know hurt we were not really heard of or were not made to speak to the public about what was in the formulas. And now now in this age of transparency and consumers wanting to know yeah. who made it, how was it made, where was it made? The cosmetic chemist has now emerged as the one that's the closest to the formula, closer than anyone else. And so that's part of part of that perfect storm. It's wild. And I see brands, you know, new brands coming up, like we our friend Charlotte. I see her brand coming up and she talks about her chemist and they talk about fails. And it's really interesting to see your world being um the the curtain pulled back a little bit on what we're putting on our skin and why we're doing it. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's the curtains being pulled back. How does one get a headline like Haley Bieber's Holy Grail? <laughs> <laughs> because I think with people, I think that kind of, you might, whether it's that headline or a different one, whether, uh, you know, anyone launching a brand wants great buzzy press, but how does that happen? It happens because Haley, other celebrities, you know, we're in an age where every celebrity is launching a product line in beauty or other categories and they recognize the fact that they should be tapping into experts yeah. to make them more credible. So yeah. I've, I, I've, yeah. I've, you know, I've met Haley and I've, you know, I've consulted a little bit with her and she's fantastic. I can't wait. She's so sweet. I just met her at the Met Gala and she was like the nicest woman. We had such a great chat. I was like, God, you're cool. She is great and her, her, her brand is going to do very well. So, and she loved, she loved Beauty Stat products and was happy to share, share wow. and talk about it. What That brings up an interesting point. Um, and we've kind of like skirted around this, you know, this everybody's an expert. Everybody's got a, a following. Everybody has, what is your take on kind of, um, I hate to say misinformation, but sometimes I even see things that I'm like, oh God, I feel like that's a bad recommendation for my skin or for my home or for my cooking, <laughs> but it has millions of views and becomes viral. Does that put you in a weird place as a, as an expert and as a brand founder, or how does that make you feel? I, I'm often asked to comment about information that goes viral that may either be incorrect or misleading. So it, it keeps me right. busy. <laughs> that's for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. so I, I try, I try, I try to stay ahead of it as much as I can and cre actually create content to try to set the record straight or to at least give consumers the other side and be a little bit more balanced. In yeah. It's funny. I um, never, as just a guy who buys anything nailed, I buy anything. If I love the packaging, I like it. It says it'll work. I'll buy anything. And um, during COVID, I started following random accounts. I don't know why, but, uh, and I love this account. It's what it's called Chemist Confessions. Yes, or something. yes, yes. And it's about, yeah, I, I follow, I follow. and it's just like kind of facts. And I'm like, wow, well, I'm the, I'm the guy that's, I usually like fancy marketing, not like weird facts on my Instagram, but I really love the efficacy and the transparency and it just makes me feel educated they're great they're great and i think i think what you know what we could do is just like a, a journalist does you can quote and reference the data that you're 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 sharing and that protects you yep it puts the onus on them somewhat and it gives yep. it, and it and it also gives the reader the follower the ability to understand that hey you're essentially you're reporting and you're 
Yeah. You're asking them to, okay, read pros and cons, both sides, and make an, make an yep. informed decision based on that. So I think that's, I think ultimately that's the goal. And the key thing about what's going on now is that I think things are evolving. We're, we're, we're you know, they, we're, mm-hmm. we're researching more, we're learning more. And because of that, the science changes as more data comes to life and as we learn more. So that's, that's the key thing that we have to, we have to understand that. So, so whatever is being said, it's based on what we have, what we know right now, what we know today. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's a, I, God, you just make me feel smarter. To talk, Ron. I really do. <laughs> I just love it. I've got another question for you about, cause you mentioned you launched as a D to C brand and now I feel like I can't go anywhere without seeing your products at my favorite stores. A, um, how did that shift happen? Were you always prepared to go into brick and mortar and into wholesale? And B, uh, for those listening, how does one even start navigating those waters with a brand? But were you expecting to go into brick and mortar from the jump? No, the plan was originally to just be a direct-to-consumer brand. It, it wasn't until yeah. our first partner was Violet Gray, which... I mean, that's kind of iconic, by the way. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we were honored to get their violet code and be approved and launch our vitamin C with, with, with them. And that's what wow. put us on the radar with, with a lot of big retailers. But again, Violet Gray is mostly a e-commerce site, cur- highly curated, highly respected. So we were honored to be part of that. And we thought that would help fuel our direct consumer. But it only got more retailers interested in us. So... You know, we've since been very mm. taking it slow and taking our time in terms of who we roll out with and making sure that if we go in, in, in doors, in stores, physical retail stores, that we were very selective. We wanted to make sure they were big markets that we could grow and sell, yep. and sell to as opposed to, try to trying to do a massive expan- expansion to all doors. So we kept it very tight, edited uh, until, until, until most recently with Ulta, where it's a massive a massive Incredible. chain here in the United States. Yeah. Well, I think Ulta's really, Ulta's having this pivotal moment, I think a lot because of TikTok too. I mean, brands that, I, you know, Fenty and uh, uh, like some major big brands coming into Ulta in a way that I only thought of as the, the Sephora way, um, you know, that I think are awesome for you to be in there. I, the reason I say I feel like I can see it everywhere is maybe just because I live in New York City and I go to like three, like if I need to go out to Nordstrom, I can get you there, which I love. And that's like the most iconic Nordstrom ever. So really great work. But so what is that? Um, what is that like when an unexpected change to the way you thought you'd be selling your brand due to your... Were you like, oh my God, we got to ramp up production. We don't have a big enough space. We're never going to be able to fulfill these. Was that a bit of a worry when you were like dipping your toe in the brick and mortar yeah. side of things? We had, we did have a little bit of time to learn what being in retail was like with smaller accounts, smaller retail channels. Yep. So we got to learn and see, okay, we could, we could do this. We, we could, we think we could scale up. And I think the other key thing is that we were able to make a key hire as well. We have a new, our new head of sales who is helping to, her name's Paula Scandoni, and she's able to help lead our our partnerships with an Ulta Beauty. So it's, again, wow. scaling up slowly, making sure that we're doing it right with smaller channels, and then between hiring and being ready with an, from an inventory perspective to service a large retail chain like Ulta Beauty. So inspiring. Because what's cool about your brand is... Um, for me, it falls into, it's so funny. I'm about to put together this like holy grails list of just stuff that I, if I buy it more than two to three times, like it's in my holy grails list, right? So your stuff's in there. A bunch of other stuff is in there. Um, and there's, and it's just a loyal, you know, I'm very loyal to these products that are in that list. How is it with your customer relationship, like with loyalty and how they engage with you and what they ask of you? Like, how do you maintain that sense of connection? Because I feel like what's cool about your brand is that it feels um, I can connect to it still. It's not like a big, scary brand that I'd be too afraid to send a message to, but it's also efficacious at the same time, right? Like it's it's expert proven. What's that relationship like between you and and this group. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's, and I think it puts a lot of work on me as I try to be hands-on 
Yes, we have a customer service department with, with, which helps with a lot of questions, but I often jump in a lot and consumers are like, wait, wait, you, wait, you are the chemist, the founder that's answering my questions. So it, they, they love that. I mean, that really, they really respond very, very positively to that. So that's, that's something that I still do and trying to see how we, how do we scale that? How do we get me and get my involvement? So we try to integrate me into more email responses and photos and, and voice to let the, the customer know that, yes, the cosmetic chemist founder cares and wants to help. Do you f- constantly have to remind yourself? Because I know as a founder, you're busy in the background, grinding and grinding. But at the end of the day, people really connect with people. And as a founder, I'm sure they want to see more of you. They've seen you in the press. They've seen you online. Uh, is that something you need to remind yourself to keep injecting yourself back into the forefront of the brand? I do. And, 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 it's, and I'm, I'm an unlikely spokesperson. I did, I did not think that I would be so out in the front of the brand. I thought that the chem, I thought I would be in the lab still. I thought I'd be a lab rat. And it, again, again, this perfect storm of the consumer wanting to know who the expert is, who's behind it. And whenever I st- stood up and got it, got in front, that's where we got the best response from awareness, yeah. sales. All of it's that. funny. You say that about the customer service thing. I got a, um, we got a customer service inquiry about a woman who all these packages came, Our one of ours was in there and the candle was broken and a bunch of other stuff was broken. And I was like, I actually wanted to write back to her personally. And she found me on TikTok and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're writing me. And I was like, and she, and I said, well, of course we're gonna take care of it. We're gonna send it out real quick, but, but. she's like, um, I was really pissed the candle came broken, but I'm a customer for life because you treated me so nicely and that you talked to me directly. And it was just a really interesting thing to see. I love that story. Customers, they could be mad as hell for one second, but it's, it's a great apology and, and, and a way of rectifying it quickly. You've you got a customer for life and they tell their friends. That is, that's so true. Yep. It's just so funny. And, you know, and you learning to be apologetic if something happens. And, and she, it was just a great little thing to see happen at like 11 p.m. in my messages on my phone that when they came through. So I liked that your little anecdote about that too. Man, I could talk to you forever. I'm running out of time. Um, there are two questions I ask everybody. Um, my first is, do you have a memory that, of building your brand that lives rent-free in your head, whether it's a good one, a bad one, a funny one, that that you'll always cherish somehow? I think two of them. I think one, one was the, the clinical studies when we got the results and, you know, we thought we had a great product, but our independent research and studies came back that we had a great product. And we got, when we got those results, we were like, it was a celebration. It was total validation. We thought, yes, we can do this. This product delivers results. And that was wow. one moment that's embedded in my, my memory. That's a big one. <laughs> Before we wrap up, let's take a quick break. Today's episode is brought to you by my brand, Preston Conrad Home. I would love for you to come into my world of luxury home fragrance, responsibly made here in America, all for under $50. We cut out the big box middlemen, and we are bringing the finest luxury fragrance right into your home. For you guys listening today on the show, you can take 10% off of any single item on PrestonConradHome.com with the offer code BRANDME. That's PrestonConradHome.com, offer code BRANDME. Any brand failures or what you thought at the time were failures that ended up becoming a real brand blessing for you or that, that weren't nearly as bad as you thought of at the time? Because I think as founders, we get really bogged down in scary glimpses that are not scary at all and that teach us a lot on the other end. I think that there's one thing, I don't know if this is, this is a failure, but it's, I think it's something that speaks to our brand being about what being real, being honest, and not, the, not a hard sell. A customer, a 60-something-year-old customer DM'd me on Instagram and said, hey, Ron, cosmetic chemist Ron, we, I don't have any wrinkles. I don't have any fine lines or I don't have any discolorations. Should, should I, do I need your product? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, you don't. 
I said, if you have, if you, have, if you don't have any of those concerns, you don't need us. I think you need a good moisturizer and sunscreen. She wrote back, "Oh my God, wow. I'm buying your product right now. I expected you to tell me to buy, to buy it." And she was she was surprised. She says, I, "I'm a customer for life. I cannot believe you you just said that." And I think, wow, that's what that's the type of, of brand we are. You know, we are not. We're, we're here to solve a need, but if you don't, if you don't, if that's if not, it's not, if that's not a concern for you, you don't need you don't need beauty stat. You, we, I can recommend other products for great moisturizers or sunscreen products. So that's something that we continues to be something that we we double down on. And now we help customers with other products, and I help educate them with other ingredients that we don't even that, that are not even contained in our products. So that's what we lean into now, and it pays off for us. I can see why. That's an amazing response. People, at, at the end of the day, we are being sold a lot of stuff, and we just want an honest person to tell us how to look good, feel our best, and save a little money when we can, right? Ron, you have been the most fun to talk to. I feel smarter already. I'm so excited to use my products when I go back into the bathroom. How can everybody find you and your brand on socials and online? Thank you, Preston. This is fantastic. We're at BeautyStat on all social. And you can find me, Ron Robinson, Cosmetic Chemist on Instagram. Ron, congratulations on everything. I got to have you back in the shop soon. Absolutely. And anytime you need me to test out anything, you know where to find a tester. Absolutely. Preston. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm <here>. Great time. <laughs> Thanks. Talk to you soon. For more on the show, you can find us on Instagram at Brand Me Podcast or at Preston Conrad. Be sure, of course, to rate, review, and subscribe and share on social. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you next week.